Shoebox is is an odd company. It's kind of a virtual company, really. We don't even have an office. Uh, but we all individually keep working and sometimes we work together, sometimes we work on our own. You know, it's a director and two producers consist of, uh, are in Shoebox and each, each person just follows their own taste with um, the crossover between Guy Healy, my partner and I, is tends to be around Stephen Knight that we both have a long working relationship with and we share projects with him, but otherwise we're doing individuals. I mean, just speaking for myself, it's basically, what I'm looking for is uh, somebody with something fresh to say, but also somebody who wants to make films that reach an audience. Now, I'm not particularly interested in making films for film's sake. Basically, it's about the um, singularity of their vision. You know, cinema is very different from, from TV. It's a very different medium. And TV tends to be a writer's medium and film is a director's medium. And, and I believe in directors and I, that's my whole um, MO has been supporting directors with vision. When I was working with Marjan Satrapi on Radioactive, I realised that as a producer, I'd never made a film with a female director before. So I'm trying to, in my third act of my career, I'm trying to address that imbalance a bit, try and work with more women um, and people from diverse backgrounds. How you ensure it is, well, you obviously are familiar with the director's work or the in or the project that they brought in and that's the product of a lot of conversations together to understand what the director wants and if you've got a good director usually it flows everything flows from the director if if the director isn't such a, a good communicator but still has good ideas then that's my job to step in and ensure that those ideas are disseminated and adopted uh, effectively our job as producers is to facilitate and, and in, sh in, in my view m my whole mo has been about you know front and center supporting and uh, uh in in enhancing the director's vision it all comes from the director joe was a gift really i mean it was amazing it's we were put together by tim bevan at working title uh, whom we made um, Pride and Prejudice with. And Joe was a first timer, but he's a very experienced TV director. And um, it was clear that he knew what to do with the camera and what to do with actors. So, uh, and he's a thoroughly nice chap. And uh, it was a really nice collaboration across those two films, uh, Pride and Prejudice and Atonement. And um, he's just very, very easy to work with. Joe. I mean, it's extremely demanding, but that's what you want from a director. You know, you want to be challenged and demanded. Um, and, uh, you know, it, it's always been a pleasure with Joe. It's always waiting for the right project um, to connect with him. You know, the development process is, tends to be with Joe, it tends to be a little more convoluted. But once he realizes, what he wants to do and how to do it then his vision just clicks in and my job when i've worked with him is to understand what that vision is and to convey that that uh, message to everybody i've been pretty lucky as a producer when i was an executive producer and working across uh, a slate of projects for from in in the states and in for film four we had variable results from various different directors. And I, th I think as a producer, when you realize that the director, your job is to kind of pick up the slack if you can. I, mean, I, I consider myself a, a, uh, uh, a creative producer. And so I understand hopefully what the director wants. And if they're not getting in the message over, then that's my job to try and step in. And it's a delicate job because you don't want to undermine the, the director. You know, the director has to be the leader on set 
So my job is to kind of dance around and make sure that what his or her message is 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 getting across and to uh, support that message in, in the most kind of practical way possible. Um, you know, if it's if it, if the director doesn't know what they're doing, and uh, I think I do, then that's really problematic. You know, um, and I find the less I have to do creatively on a movie, the better the movie has a chance of working. Not because my ideas are bad, but it's it's always uh, the director who needs to be in pole position, and that's the vision we're su supporting. If that's not there then that's a problem. Generally, on every movie I do, I'm there every day, which is unusual for, for a lot of producers. So I tend to, um, and it's boring, you know, shooting a movie, uh, because if it's all going well, you've got nothing to do as a producer. Other people, other, you know, you just sit around watching other people work, um, which is not the best use of one's time, but I find myself so... Uh, fascinated with the process and kind of drawn to it that I, f I figure that unless I've got the, it all in my head, if I've seen what went on everywhere with everything, only then can I make a proper contribution because I'm coming from a position of knowledge and power. Yeah, I always hire the heads of the department, always with the director. Often I've worked with foreign directors who don't know uh, the crew base, say here in the UK, and I'll make uh, recommendations as I did with Radioactive, you know, uh, Michael Carlin, who was our designer, and uh, Consolato Boyle, who did the costumes. On Spencer, you know, which Pablo is directing right now, uh, Jacqueline Duran, uh, I've worked with several times before, and so I made the recommendation that she do the costumes, and Pablo loved her, and she loved Pablo, so that's worked out very well. Um, I helped, you know, facilitate Johnny Greenwood coming on board for the for the score. So I'm pretty much involved in all that, those choices. Yeah. If you don't know, there's always somebody there who does. And my, I, I still couldn't talk about lenses and light with any real um, convincing uh, point of view. It's um, you know, I'm quite good now, but I'm not a technical person at all. So, you know, and I do understand how, you know, where, when you, how you shoot a scene, you know, and, and that's important, but it doesn't have to be. You can be the kind of producer who doesn't come to set who just puts the movie together, lets everybody get on with it. You know, it's very, there are many, many different iterations of, that, of the role. Um, but I, I, on the one thing I did decide coming into producing was that I would understand how uh, the budgetary mechanics worked on a film. So I spent a lot of time sitting with production managers and accountants talking about how, how all that works. And that makes, that really grounds me. I feel very comfortable um, with that relationship because that's, you know, our, our responsibility is both to the art and to the business of film. And I am, I need to understand the business. The art, the art of the film, I, you know, I can sit and watch a movie and have an opinion uh, and know that I'm, I can back up my opinion because I, I understand how films work and, and so on. But I had to learn how to budget a film. I mean, that said, if you told, gave me a script and said, can you do the budget for this? I couldn't, not possible. But I know somebody who could and then built with them uh, once there was a budget. It's both. It's, it's, I'd say it's, it's the interface between art and, and uh, business. I mean, the reason film and TV is such a complicated medium is, is because it can't be reduced to, you know, it's because it, it costs so much money, but it can't be reduced to a set of financial equations. You know, so there's the art element has to balance very much with with the uh, with the science, if you like, with the mechanics, the physical mechanics. And, not, and as a producer, you have to look both ways. You have to look towards the creative and you have to look towards the business. Because uh, I don't want to be taking money from a company to, to make a film and not deliver them something that uh, 
repays their investment and their and their commitment. Yeah, that's when the problem, if you're working on a budget and there's a very expensive idea, um, it's really difficult, I find, to separate those two instincts. One is, wow, what a great idea. And the other is, oh my God, that's gonna cost a fortune. So that's a tricky one, it really is. And, you know, went on the very occasional um, times when films have run into budgetary problems, we've got started going over budget. I find that very challenging to um, try and protect the budget and the film at the same time. The only way to cut a budget is by cutting the script. Cut the schedule and cut the script, it's the only way. Uh, and if you're cutting into the meat of a, of a story, then that's very dangerous. I'm very, um, very involved. Very involved, depending on the director. You know, some, some directors, not in my experience, very many, you know, don't, don't want you to look at anything. But once they realize that you're a good collaborator, and that starts when you're shooting, because, you know, the conversations I have with Pablo right now um, are based on what he's shot. And he knows that I understand what he's doing. So he's treating me like a collab, he's a collaborative director anyway, he's great. But um, I can see there's a good relationship and I'm, I'm sure he will show me cuts early on and so on. And that's what I'm used to, you know. Plus, you know, the post period is when everybody gets interested in the film. When it's shooting, people just say, oh yeah, the dailies look great and that's it. Because nobody who isn't involved with the making of the film has the patience uh, or understanding to watch the rushes and understand what we're doing. But once we're in post and there's a cut of the movie, everybody's got an opinion. So at that point, my job becomes handling the financier's input on, on the film, you know, and balancing that with what the director wants and what we believe the film um, is, you know, what, what kind of movie we're making. So she's shooting a film called Spencer, which stars Kristen Stewart as uh, she's playing Princess Diana. And it's the story of uh, a fictional story of Princess Diana's last Christmas with the royal family. Um, and we are shooting it for a variety of reasons in Germany with um, uh, and the UK, uh, but majority shooting in Germany as has happened with COVID coming into play. We've had to kind of minimize our film and shoot it in the most convenient way. And it proved to be effective to shoot it in, in Germany, even though it's an entirely British British movie with a British cast. Yeah, I've got two other producers. There's a German producer, Jonas Dornbach, and then uh, Pablo's brother, Juan, is his producer. So there's three of us, so we divide the workload. That, that's that been easy. That hasn't been a problem at all. They, they're doing all the work in Germany. I'm just sitting there going, yeah, do this, do that. Um, they're, they're the people who are put in, putting in the hours and doing and at the coalface, which is unusual. I've never not been on set for a movie I've produced before. So it's the first. Filmmaking is a collective undertaking. And to have, you know, my assistant in Chiswick, I'm here, my line producer in Yorkshire, my production coordinator in Berkshire and the accountant in Brighton, it's like really difficult. You know, things do slip through the cracks. I, I, I don't recommend this as a way forward to make films. I mean, I've never met uh the the uh casting director on our film you know i've been working with her for nine months and um we hadn't worked together before and i see her a lot and talk to her a lot but i've never met her in person and that feels weird you know i think it's film is about people meeting and telling stories together so we need to be together so I don't think there's any, oh, let's go all go virtual and make virtual films. Uh, for example, you know, uh, visual effects has been way ahead forever. You know, when you make a film now, it's kind of irrelevant that your visual effects company is based in London. You know, apart from the fact that you get to see the, 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 the VFX supervisor, he's farming his work out to India, to Korea, to Canada, you know, you get stuff coming in from all over the world. So 
that's the template for remote working. Uh, and that they've done it very successfully at visual effects, which makes sense because it's a digital world, right? So it's more complex when you're, you're dealing with the man management aspect of things. One of the good things about remote working is that it does, I think it's very efficient in terms of our, the way we use our time, you know, because you, do, you only want to be on, you, you, you're not hanging around at the water cooler, you know, or in the, in the kitchen making a cup of tea endlessly. You, you know, you, you, you're much more focused. Uh, but, you know, ultimately, can you make films remotely? Or well, yes, you can do anything you know, remotely, but I still think the thing to pay attention to is maintaining the human touch through it all.